And here we go, guys. Number 18. So the diagram shows a curve with equation y equals fx. So this is a typical quadratic curve. Okay, this is a U shape. The coordinates of the minimum point, as in the turning point right over here where the, where the x mark is, is minus 2, minus 1. So here they want us to write down the coordinates of the minimum point of the curve of equation. In other words, they just want us to shift the graph wherever it tells us here. So according to part i, it wants us to do y equals a function at x minus 5. So basically, when they write in this form, x minus 5, you got to think of it as in you're solving for an x coordinate. You got to think of this as x equals plus 5. Okay, so what this means is that you shift to the right by plus 5. So this curve, if it starts at minus 2, minus 1, it's going to shift from minus 2. If you add 5 across over here to plus 3. So it looks a bit like this or something. And this should be 3 minus 1. So remember, only the x changes. So it'll be 3 minus 1. Now this tells us to half the function. So in other words, we should half the y coordinates. So if you had minus 1, half of minus 1 is minus half or minus 0 0.5. And of course, the x-axis does not change. Okay, so next bit now. Okay, so the graph of y equals a sine x minus b plus c for this given curve is drawn in the grid below. And here they want us to find the values of a, b, and c. Okay, so first things first. With a sine wave, you can see clearly that the range is really messed up. Because from what we understand, and if you're not too sure what it looks like, it's always locked between 1 to minus 1, yeah, and goes back from 90, 180, 270, and 360. And of course, it's symmetrical as well. Well, not symmetrical, but it goes backwards too. Okay. Now, one thing to note is that if this, was, if this had a height of, of 1 and minus 1, this means that the center is 0. But over here, it looks like it's from minus 1 to plus 3, so the center must be over here. So what I would always do is firstly draw the center line, just so you can actually see where it locks to. Now, doing that, you can kind of see that, you know, the the width, the width, the height from 0 to 1 is 1. So the, dis the distance is 1 here and 1 here. Here you can see the distance is 2. So what this means is that the graph itself has been doubled. So a in this case is a, is a, is a scale factor. It means scale factored by 2. So we know straight off the bat that a is 2. Okay. Next. You can see that the graph itself has shifted up by 1 because the center is always at 0. If you're going to double a graph, this would double to 2 and minus 2. But for some reason, it's kind of oddly gone to 3 and negative 1 is here. So it's kind of the whole graph is shifted up from the center. So we can say that for C, it's gone up by plus 1. So C, this, well, this one deals with um, shifting up or down. Now the, now the tricky bit is... Um, how much did it move to the right by or left? So that, that's the x minus b. So let's just have a think about this. You, typically, if you're going to do it normally, if this was the center, it would have started from here. And it would have gone up to 90 and then back to 180 and then down to 270. So remember, minus 1 is the base, 1 is the center and 3 is the height and back to 360. So just look at the distance now. You can see from here to here, it's gone from 90 to 180, so it's a 90 degrees change. Um, from 180 to 270 is another 90, and from 270 to 360 is another 90. So that's it. So B must be uh, 90 degrees. Okay, number 19. So Jack plays a game with two fast spinners, A and B. So with A, it can land on 2, 3, 5, or 7, whereas B can land on 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Now, Jack spins both spinners, and to win the game, one needs to be odd and the other needs to be even. So that's the aim. One spin has to be odd and the other has to be even. Now, Jack plays the game twice. Work at the property that Jack wins the game both times. So in order to do this, we just need to work out all the possible outcomes he could win. So the only way he could win is that if he got an odd first time with spinner A and even with spinner B, or he got an even with spinner A, or an odd with spinner B. So remember, this is just a, an outcome for um, the first game, yeah. So let's have, let's go have let's have a look at the probabilities. So to get an odd in the in the first spinner, you have how many options? You got three and five. So that's two out of no, also seven. So that's three out of four. So you have three quarters, and always put it times because you're doing this all at the same time. And to get even in B, you got one, two, three. So three out of five. So that's literally the probability for that. Whereas 
if you go an even in the first game for A, uh, even for spin A, it will be just 1 out of 4. And again, to get an odd for, game, for spin B, it will just be 1, 2, uh, so that's 2 out of 5. And that's it. So literally, you just work this out. And what do we get? So you get 3 times 3 is 9, so 9 over 4 times 5, 20. Whereas this is 2 out of 20. And because you got two different options, you have to add this up. So this will give us a total probability of 11 out of 20. Now, this is only the probability of winning one game. So you have two options to win one game with 11 out of 20 chance to win. But if he's going to win twice, well, you just have to do this twice. So winning the first game and winning the second game, you need to be, it needs to be at 11 over 20 times 11 out of 20. And that's it. This is literally the final outcome. And I'm multiplying this out, what well, you should get uh, 121 times 400. Or, you know, actually, I'm actually doing this mentally, so hopefully this is right. But anyway, guys, that's literally it for 19. So let's move on. Oh, and here we are, guys. The final question, number 20. So let's do this. ABC is an isosceles triangle. So quick recap, isosceles simply means two lengths are the same. So they'll probably give you one length. So we have to realize our length is the same such that AB equals AC. So this means if we call this one A, we can call this one B. So AB equals AC. Okay, so two identical lengths. Such that A has coordinates 437, so label that there. And B and C lie on the line with equation 3Y equals 2X plus 12. So we just got to imagine that this is a straight line with equation 3Y equals 2X plus 12. So we keep in line with this here. So we can eventually work out the gradient and whatever we need to do. Yeah, and um, yeah, so find an equation of the line of symmetry of the triangle. Ooh, so that's an interesting one. So line of symmetry is down here. Okay. And yeah, just quick note, if this is a line of symmetry, that means we have two perpendicular lines. So that could be useful for a second. Give your answer in the usual form. All right, cool. So let's do this. So what can we, how do we start with this? So what I would personally advise is that since we've got a coordinate here, which is on this um, perpendicular line, and we've got a line already here, we should go ahead and find the gradient of this line. And to do that, we need to rewrite this in the usual y equals mx plus c form, where m is the gradient. So, so far, it looks to me that it's almost there. We just, we just have to divide this equation by 3. So we're going to have y equals um, 2 over 3x plus 4. So this means the gradient of the line that cuts through BC is 2 over X, but the perpendicular gradient of the line from A downwards is going to be the reciprocal negative, the negative reciprocal. So we can say that the line going downwards is going to be Y equals minus 3 over 2X plus something, which we don't know yet. So we're actually almost there. We literally just got to find C. But it's easy now because since we know that um, there's a coordinate on this line, that 4 phase 7 is on that line, we just plug in x is 4 and y is 37. So let's do that. Plugging in 4, 37, when, when y is 37 and x is um, 4, so it'll be 4 times 3 over 2, which is uh, minus um, 12 over 2 plus c. And whew, it looks like we're done. So minus 12 over 2 is minus 6 plus um, c. So the purpose is, is to find the c value and then we can rewrite in that usual form. And now we just add 6 across which is going to give us 43. And yeah, that's our value for C. Now putting it back in the usual form, so we've got Y equals minus three over two X plus 43. And the form they want us is uh, an integer form where P, Q and R are whole numbers, yeah? So integer means whole numbers. To do that, just clear the fraction, so times by two across, we're gonna get two Y equals minus three X plus uh, times, by, times 43 by two and you get 86 and they want us they want in px plus qy form so we've got plus 3x across so we're gonna have 3x plus 2y equals 86 and that's it guys that's literally the end of the paper Whew. so i hope this helped anyway i mean if you guys got any questions or on any problems uh, let me know i mean this final question i think wasn't too bad i mean if i got it wrong then you know <laughs> lol but anyway guys i hope hope this helps and please check out my other videos leave a comment subscribe share with your friends but otherwise i shall see you guys in the next ones ciao